Well, hello, I'm Rebecca McLean, and welcome to Women of Color, Money, and Legacy, where I talk money matters. I share strategies to empower us to become financially literate in terms of managing our money wisely, building generational wealth, financial freedom, and creating a lasting legacy. It is a journey of learning and growing together. Now, I'd like to give a shout out to all of my new subscribers. As always, I'm so delighted to have you part of this community. Now, I'm going to do something different. I'm adding a new segment to my channel called Financial Profiles, where I'm going to be analyzing the financial profile of well-known or influential women of color. Now, I'm not a financial advisor, so I won't be coming from that perspective but I'm simply presenting a view from an outside perspective and then sharing some lessons that we can learn from these observations. Now, I'll probably do one financial profile per month. I haven't decided that yet, but I thought it would be an interesting segment. And having said that, our financial profile for today is tennis great Serena Williams. Now, I'm a huge fan of both Serena and Venus. And I considered doing both of them together, but I decided to just focus on Serena for this particular segment. And when doing these profiles, I'll look at the background of the individual, check out their financial profile, offer an analysis, and what lessons we can learn from them. Okay, so let's jump right into today's subject, Serena Williams. Serena was born September the 26th, 1981 in Saginaw, Michigan. She is the youngest of five children. She's married and has one child or daughter named Olympia. Now, Serena is widely regarded as the greatest tennis player in the open era. And for more than two decades, she was the face of women's tennis. Serena retired from the game just three months ago in September of this year after playing in the U.S. Uh, open Tournament. She turned pro in 1995 and played for 27 years, 27 dominant years, which is unheard of. And she has won 23 Grand Slam single titles, the most of any player in the open era. Along with her sister Venus, she has won 14 women's doubles titles. Uh, she won four Olympic gold medals. Uh, she was ranked world number one in singles for 319 weeks, including a record 186 consecutive weeks. And these are just a few of her accomplishments. The woman had a phenomenal career, but it wasn't all roses. As every woman of color, particularly black woman watching this video can relate, Serena and Venus had to deal with racism. And luckily they had a father, Richard Williams, who was also their coach and their manager. And if you knew anything about him, he was hard nosed and no nonsense type of protector when it came to his children because they were playing in a predominantly white sport. Throughout their career, especially in the early years, they were referred to in derogatory terms. I would look at some Facebook posts or YouTube posts and look at the comments and all the vile comments that they had, but they stayed the course and they excelled. And I imagine that this lack of respect actually motivated them the more uh, they were strong and they are strong and tenacious women to say the least. And their accomplishments gave rise to other women of color in tennis such as Sloane Stevens, um, Naomi uh, Osaka, um, Madison Keys and Coco Golf. So the Williams sisters has had a tremendous impact on the tennis culture. And Serena also had to deal with several different tennis related injuries, as well as some more serious health issues or health scares rather. Now in 2010, she was diagnosed with blood clots in her lungs and the doctors discovered that she had a hematoma in her abdomen. Now a hematoma is usually caused by a broken blood vessel that was damaged say during surgery or an injury. Now she was treated and managed to bounce back from that health scare, but it arose its ugly head again in 2017 when she suffered a life-threatening experience after the birth of her daughter. I mean, she almost died and she knew she had this history of blood clots, so she lived with this fear all along. But this time uh, it started as a pulmonary embolism, which is a condition where the arteries in the lungs become blocked by a blood clot. 
and she had already had an emergency C-section to the delivery of her daughter. Now she had to return to surgery where the doctors found a large hematoma in her stomach. And she spent the first six weeks of motherhood in bed. So she has had to endure a lot emotionally and physically. Now, Serena is also an activist. She's been involved in social changes, using her platform to speak out against police brutality and standing up for the LGBT community. Now, she and Venus were also at the forefront of the campaign for payment equality in tennis, and they're credited with helping to change the historical disparities in tennis as well as sports in general. So major props to her for her civic contributions. Now, let's move on and take a look at her financial profile. Now, according to Forbes, Serena has a net worth of $260 million. And net worth is the value of all of your assets minus the total of your liabilities. And if you own more than you owe, then you have a positive uh, net worth. And Serena earned $95 million in tennis prize money over her career, which is number one in the overall rankings in tennis, uh, women's tennis, and uh, the most of any female athlete, as a matter of fact. So let's take a look at the source of her income streams. And she didn't just sit on her laurels and collect tennis checks. She had other endeavors as well. Now, she is a venture capitalist. She owns a company called Serena Ventures, where she's invested in more than 60 startup companies. And she has a dozen brand partnerships, including Gatorade, Ford, Hanes, Gucci, and Nike. Now, she makes about $50 million a year in endorsements. Her deal with Nike is worth $60 million. I'm not sure the time frame that it covers, but I'm sh pretty sure that Nike is her largest endorsement deal. She also owns a small stake in the Miami Dolphins. And in September of this year, she released a children's book. So as you can see, her off the court endeavors are evidence that Serena has transcended tennis to become a cultural icon and a business leader. And quite naturally, she lives a luxurious lifestyle off court. Now she owns two properties, one in Miami and one in Paris. And she mostly resides in her Florida home with her daughter and husband, Alexis Ohanian. Now let me just say about her husband, he has a net worth of $70 million. So he's not leeching off of her. He is successful in his own right. Now let's move on and do an analysis of Serena's financial success journey and what lessons we can learn. Now Serena was not born into a wealthy family. She grew up living in poverty in Compton, California. She and Venus were unlikely candidates to become tennis stars. Their family was not members of the country club with all of these prestigious connections. Tennis was and still is a predominantly white sport. And Serena said that throughout her whole life, she felt like an underdog and she used that motivation as her driving force to become the greatest tennis player of all times. She fought her way to the top of the tennis world. Can you imagine the mental anguish playing tennis in a venue where your own country is rooting against you? And I have seen that time and time again, especially in the early years, not so much in the latter years, but if when they were coming up and uh, there was a lot of controversy surrounding them, one particular event comes to mind. In 2001, there was a tennis match scheduled between Venus and Serena at Indian Wells in California. And shortly before the start of the match, Venus pulled out of the match due to an injury. She had tendonitis in her knee and the crowd became very upset and they accused the sisters of uh, trying to get out playing each other because they were sisters and they didn't want to compete against each other, uh, which was totally unfounded. And when Venus and her father returned the next day to watch Serena's match, they were met with all these overwhelming boos and racial epithets from the crowd. And Serena did win the match and she was booed off the court. I'm telling you, it was awful. And they boycotted the tournament and that vowed that they would never play there again. And which was a big deal because they were at the top of the game. They were a big draw. Now, can you just imagine how traumatizing that must have been for a 19 year old? 
Now, Venus did finally decide to return after nine years, but Serena didn't return for 14 years. So they both had to endure more pressure than any other players. And let's not kid ourselves, racism was very much a part of that. Do you find this video interesting so far? Please don't forget to subscribe to the channel. So what financial lessons can we learn from Serena Williams? First of all, we want to create multiple streams of income. Serena didn't just rest on her laurels and tennis, as I said. She was able to use her tennis chops as leverage to segue into other lucrative endeavors. And I can't express how important it is to own something, especially if you work a nine to five job. You need a buffer because there is no such thing as job security. You need to have an investment portfolio with stocks and bonds, crypto, IRAs, ETFs, a house where you amass equity, a side hustle that you can level up your income, a business that can provide you with unlimited earning potential. When that one job is your only source of income, you're at the mercy of that company. Uh, your boss that you might not get along with, your colleagues and any uh, discriminatory practices from that company, that is not a good place to be. You want to have multiple streams of income. That's number one. And number two, you want to expand your network. And I didn't say expand your friendships per se, and that's fine, but expand your network. Connect with other people in your line of work or business. And it doesn't have to be a whole Rolodex of people. It might be one or two people that you meet per year. Have lunch from time to time. Text from time to time. Stay in the loop with people who share your values. Iron sharpens irons. Their connections can become your connections and vice versa. Don't connect for the sake of just taking, but it needs to be reciprocal. There needs to be an exchange. And that's number two. And number three, don't despise small beginnings. It doesn't matter where you start, it's where you finish that matters. You might be a single mother raising children. You might even live in a shelter. You might need to get a degree in order to get ahead. You might just be down on your luck. Your current condition doesn't have to be your destination. You can level the playing field if need be. Whatever your Achilles heel might be, use it as motivation to drive you forward rather than cause you to shrink back and give up. Talk to yourself out loud. Say things like, I might be a housekeeper right now, but one day I'm going to own a cleaning business with 100 employees. Sometimes you just have to encourage yourself. I might be on public assistance right now, but I'm coming out of this. It's important that you write down your vision for your future. Read it every day. Speak affirming words over your life. Building wealth starts in the mind. That's number three. Number four, work in an environment where you are appreciated. Don't work in a culture where you're just tolerated, where you're just a pawn for other people. Don't put up with being disrespected and used, having to deal with racism and sexism. I don't care how much you're being paid. It's just not worth you losing your dignity to have that job. Find another job or go work for yourself. You have to know your value and draw a line in the sand to what you will or will not tolerate. It's called living life on your own terms. That's number four. And number five, don't be ashamed to live well. As long as you are able to afford a certain lifestyle, then you should enjoy the fruits of your labor. If you have a positive net worth, then you're on the right track. But don't go around trying to fake it till you make it, trying to impress other people that you don't even like with money that you don't have. That is a recipe for disaster, not success. Okay, so there you have it. And I hope that you have enjoyed this financial profile of Serena Williams and what lessons we can learn from her financial success. I really enjoyed bringing this to you. 
Now, I really appreciate your support and I salute all of you who tune into the channel. Now, do me a favor and hit the subscribe button if you haven't already subscribed. And if you don't understand how that works, it costs you nothing. It's not like subscribing to a magazine. It just means that the content on my channel is going to come up on your suggested page more. You're going to see more of my content. It's free to you, but it means the world to me because it helps me to get my content out there to other people. Now, I'll be back next week with another Women of Color Money Legacy video. Until then, take care and bye for now.